Women Matters, the 25th of March, 2024. Hi, spring has come, as you can see on my background, wonderful anemones. It's, I love that. It's really so beautiful. And yeah, I love spring. And finally, winter is over. And I'm now, quite... <laughs> what are your temperatures like? How warm does it get? Uh, but now in the house, it's not too warm. It's 17. I have no fire in the in the uh, stove. Uh, so, But outside, it's about 20 during the day. And when you are in the sun, then it's really hot. But it can also be only 12 or 13. I hope on, on Easter Monday, I have a big celebration many people coming here so i hope it will be good weather because if there's no good weather we all have to get very in a, in a, in a quite a big space but narrow for many many people so i hope we can use the outside spaces so exciting yeah, so many people coming. Hey, you can come just decide <laughs> come <Yeah>. over <laughs> for easter monday it's just 12 hours i think in airplane <laughs> <laughs> okay, I give over to Christine King. Hey, everybody. Um, it's just great to be together. I think I've missed a couple of them, partly with the time zone craziness that I managed to create for myself. But um, all is well. I'm excited about new projects and people who are working hard, um, being creative. And I won't go into more detail other than that. I just love it. I love it when I can make changes that um, are beautiful, really, to put it simple. And um, doing some Enneagram work and just one happy, happy, happy thing. Um, I have some of my clients are in California and um, one of them flew here to stay in my special apartment for clients for intensive Enneagram um, consultations. And he came and his father lives not too far from here and he, went to the beautiful, love it apartment. Said the apartment's great, but you know your refrigerator's broken. I'm buying you a new one. I went, what? <laughs> you think you've helped my son so much? You just pick any kind of refrigerator you want, the best one that's possible. So that was a happy, 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 unexpected gift. Yep. So just good news. That's all. Nothing complicated. So, um, oh, who am I? Christine King, um, outside of Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm an Enneagram teacher, coach, whatever we want to call me. That's it. <laughs> I want to give over to Monia. She said she can hear us. And if you unmute yourself, I think you could speak too, but the camera is not there. So you are black today. So, but I think you can speak, you can talk. Try, try to unmute. No? Oh yeah. There you no. go. Good, good, here you are. But we don't hear anything. Hmm. So, we can't hear anything. I guess that you are speaking, so that's not working today. So I give over to Hanani. Hello, everyone. Hello, Monia. I hope we can hear you soon and you can hear us. I'm in Cape Town, and we have I've sent to Monia some pictures last week. We had very high temperatures still, summer temperatures. Um, and then today it's a little bit cooler. So even more warm than you have, Heidi, currently. So we still are in like a summery space, not yet autumn, winter. And yeah, I'm, I'm well. Um, I've just been in a most amazing Equinox celebration last week. It was just most beautiful. There were singers, there were musicians, um, a poet, a shaman, Bruce Lee's daughter Shannon Lee was sharing about the year of the dragon and her father's legacy and many other things but it was just most beautiful and then from that space of really peacefulness to now enter into the eclipse season which we are in from today 
um, because it's a full moon and it's a lunar eclipse. And on the 8th of April, there's solar eclipse. So, mm -hmm. Christine, when you said many changes, it's what uh, eclipse is all about. It's radical changes. So the next two weeks are really open for lots of changes. I'm excited about that. And also excited about a reconnecting to our creative agency workshop that I'm going to share together with um, Michelle James, who also shares lots of creativity and creative thinking and the likes, uh, practices and tools on the 21st of April. So I'm delighted about that. I'm also already in that energy. It's also about lots of creative change. Thank you. And I'm passing to you, Christine. Hello, I'm Christine in Carlsbad, California. And um, yeah, spring is here. Also, it's we're still getting rain, though. It's It hasn't particularly warmed up, but things are in bloom. And it's just the air is nicer. Um, you can smell things, you know, that are blooming. And thankfully, I don't have allergies <laughs> because uh, there's a lot of pollen in the air. Um, so my daughter settled on a wedding venue and a date. So April of 2025, we have a, a date, April 11th. She and Nick are getting married. So that's nice to have that figured out. Um, and Tom and I went to the venue over the weekend because I wanted him to be able to see it. It's, uh, it's going to be kind of an outdoor wedding at somebody's property. And we get use of the whole property and for the ceremony and the, the reception. So it'll be, it'll be nice. Looking forward to that. Um, and what else? Um, I saw Lorraine a couple of days ago. She is practicing a presentation on polyvagal theory for the ICON conference. Uh, she's going to be a presenter at the ICON conference. And so she's getting her, pre, uh, her PowerPoint ready. Uh, so we went over that and she's going to have some more time to practice. I don't know. I'll, I'll encourage her to also share with the group because um, polyvagal theory may be something that everybody's willing to talk about. Like um, what else? Yeah, I'm I'm getting uh, slowly chipping away at some things because uh, I'm not working Thursdays or Fridays now, um, except for an occasional hour or two. But um, I'm getting a few more things done. I'm trying to get used to the pace uh, of having a little bit more time off. So uh, enjoying that. Haven't figured it out totally. And I tell you, the days go fast. I don't know. They just go by so fast. So it's pretty incredible. And I will pass on to, I guess it's you, Heidi. Yeah, it's me, but let's try again, Monia. She tried to connect to the audio again. Uh, try again to unmute yourself and then we see. And just to let you know, I think uh, Lorraine will be able to join us at the next session, but she yeah, had it, a- it, it would client. be. Very nice to, to hear her uh, talking about uh, polyvagal theory. So Monia fell out again. I think it's just not working today. What I was hearing as a topic would be change. Change happening. And you said in the next two weeks, the eclipses and all the changes are going on. And also you were mentioning, Christine, the, the how the days are running. It's also, for me, it's a change. And also how I how I live the days is different than even a year ago or something like that. Uh, the other Christine has to go. I, we don't hear you, but it's fine. You you told us. I'm sorry that <laughs> we lose all our our girls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. So let's uh, talk as sweet about change. Also marrying, no, the wedding, it's still a year from now, but it's it's a change too. When you take marriage seriously, then it's really, I mean, a huge change in life. So Yeah. So. Well, one of the changes is for instance, um, so my daughter got invited to his family for Easter dinner. <laughs> so sharing. The sharing holidays is going to be a change. Um, 
and also just, you know, when to invite him um, to our things. We did something this weekend for my other daughter's birthday. We went to tea and uh, it was just going to be our family. But I think Adrian asked him if he wanted to go and he did. So he came to that and, and it's just a matter of changing. Like, you know, he's a family member, but he's not entirely a family member. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, Hanani, will you tell us a little bit about these eclipses and why you think that there are changes, uh, huge changes coming up? Because of the energy between the lunar and the solar eclipse. So it's the sun and the moon. And so it's our external world, now inner world, so close to each other, literally less than two weeks apart. It has a huge impact for us to also, if we come from the equinox, which is about balance, because the days and the nights were exactly the same, no matter where we were in the world. And from that place then, to create this inner and outer balance between our inner world and our outer world, so our thoughts, feelings, and emotions versus the, the external world, so to speak, to create that inner balance that we can and how we respond to change, um, that, we, that we're not getting off guard and that we can welcome it in change, um, for me, is something that I can already feel in this energy myself. So it's how we approach change and from where in ourselves. And I've, I came to realize for myself that if I become aware of where my awareness is in my body, at a single moment in time when there are change happening around me, it determines how I respond to it and from where do I dis respond to it. So do I respond to it from anxiety, fear or lack versus from a place of inner peace, more relaxed, um, more prepared, so to speak, to approach it in whatever way is needed and not from that place of, and from trust that, everything will be okay regardless of what's happening i have a complete different experience to change but also to disruptions and unexpected events but i love what you said christine about um family member not yet a family member and when you spoke about everything is going so fast i just want to bring it back to that as well is i experienced that our relationship with time has changed that's why we're experiencing it faster because our awareness is opening up to so much more. The internet started it, that we could become aware of more things in the world of what's happening and question things and the likes. But suddenly, technology and the internet and everything enabled us to take in more as well. So time is for me linked to information that we receive from the universe and from everywhere around us. And But our bodies are still like in, sometimes we get caught off guard because our bodies are still reacting from a slower time where we experience time much slower. So then there's dissonance and then that can create a lot of anxiety when we experience change. But this time is I could feel it in myself that lots of things are suddenly going to happen. I can't explain what it is. I just sense it. And I'm only talking for myself, obviously, my own life. But I could see it coming, so to speak, but I'm not really what it is, but I could feel it. And that made me aware of everything is feeling for us faster because it's a, it's a felt sense. It feels faster. So there's something going on on a kinesthetic level with our bodies and our awareness that that created us, that caused us to to step out of a linear way of looking at time to a more dynamic way of looking at time. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, to me, it makes sense. Um, I feel, yeah, the time is still sort of linear, but it's not. So it happens to me that I ask myself, did I do my exercises today? Or was it yesterday or was it now or, and and things like that you know that it seems to be fluid so 
sometimes I think I'm only forgetful, but but it feels like things have happened just now, or they have happened even two weeks ago, but there is not much a difference between between that. So as if time is not not separating myself from what is uh, going on, something like that. How is it for you, Christine? Um, I think I relate to time mostly in terms of how much I'm able to accomplish. It's like a productivity thing, you know. How much was I able to do today? And a day that goes very quickly means I obviously didn't get enough things squeezed in <laughs> that I thought I would. It went too fast and I didn't get it all squeezed in. So, um, and then I guess the other way I relate to time is uh, age. You know, certainly there's seasons and I relate to seasons and that kind of thing. Um, but also when I think of time, you know, it's it's a finite each day is finite, each year is finite, and life is finite. So it's this property that I can't, all I can do is manage it. I can't, certainly can't control it. And um, I don't know, as you were talking, Hannah Lee, I was thinking about is change, do we always value it as as either good or bad? Do we always look at it as a positive or a negative? I'm trying to think of change that can be neutral. Um, but I think mostly we relate to change as either it's a plus or a minus. There's not a whole lot that changes that we don't have a feeling about one way or another. Yeah. I'm wondering about that because much of, often change happens without us even noticing and so I don't know if there is this judgment, maybe later, oh, that has happened and that's not good or so, but in the moment, maybe not. I don't know. What do you say, Anneli? I feel it's, from my own, in my own experience, I feel that it's, um, it's, a, it's a fear strategy change. And, as, and what I mean by that, it's, it's a mental thing. It's how we think and how we've been conditioned to believe about change, that it's a bad thing or a good thing. Because if we look at just when we grow, we're growing up as, as children, our bodies went through tremendous change, growth, tremendous development. Our cells every seven years uh, is, re, re, you know, it's recreated. Um, so it's not, un, if, if we look at the body just by itself, there's just so much going on inside of it the changes that's happening that we can't see necessarily immediately, but as kids, we were not worried about that. We we felt it. We maybe felt uncomfortable. Oh, this didn't feel so good, but it was not a mental construct. I believe in the last, and I'm talking from a professional level now because I was part of the so-called change management um, era in business when it started in the late 90s. It was a thing in business, change management. And if before that, there wasn't something like that. The same stuff happened in business, stuff changed. But suddenly there was a whole, there was a whole um, vocation just for that, to manage change in business. So I, if, and if I look back at well, where we are now from then, and before that, in my early career, Change was also happening, but there was not this. We didn't make it a thing. I think, and for me, that means it's a mental construct that we took on. And then went, then it went into activism and all that type of, in all those type of uh, dimensions as well. Um, so for me personally, I, I don't. I still believe it's a fear strategy that it, because it can create it can create fear because we. We, it's it looks like this terrible thing that's happening, but life it, life is not static. Life is fluid, and I love the word that you used, Heidi. Fluid. Life is fluid. It's in constant movement. Really look at life itself and nature, and even with seasons, it's constant movement. It's never the same. Mm -hmm. So I do believe it's some kind of of indoctrination of 
conditioning that we took on. I don't know what you mean by that, a fear strategy. I don't know what you mean by uh, indoctrination. The way, the, way we, the, the way we speak about change currently in the world, especially the last 10, 20, 30 years, is that it's going to be bad. You know, the world's going through all these changes. Um, if we look on a political level, a due, um, economical level, doesn't matter what it is. We also had economical downfalls in the 1990s and in the 70, 1970s, for example, but people didn't see it as a, it just happened. There was stuff happening in the world. And then the concept fear creates, uh, change can create fear inside of us. Then we go into flight, fright, freeze mode, and it takes us out of flow of the natural flow of life. So it's if we talk, about, and I'm specifically talking about change from the outside in, that's imposed from the outside in, not from the inside out. And for me, so it, it doesn't put us in a position that we can do something about. It takes us back, it takes us backwards. And that a lot of people go back, if we look at what's happening, and I'm just, again, bringing back to the business world. In, in 2020, people had to work remotely and they couldn't go to the office. Now, four years later, suddenly people are going back. So there's a reversion. Lots of these big companies go back on coming back to the office where we could see it that worked perfectly in 2020, 2021, and 2022, and big parts of 2023. But leadership wants to go back to what was, because the change that we had, it's not, it's not adopted. So it created, because it was created out of fear at that time in 2020, because we didn't know what was going on with, what, with COVID and whatever, the pandemic, so to speak. But when, so when I say it's a fear strategy, it's how we, how we share the message about it, the type of language we use. Does that make sense? So it's how we articulate it. Because yeah. you, if, you, if, if you look at your child, uh, when they were little, you didn't make them fearful about them growing up. But it was part of the natural cycle. We didn't tell them, oh, you're going to change a lot. It just happened. And then we supported them as they were going through the uncomfortableness and whatever was happening to them. And creating a safe space for them to develop and grow, but we didn't impose a, a thing from the outside. Oh, you 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 know you're going through all these changes. And yes, if something happened, like some extraordinary life event happened, it it was it was it's it was more natural than it's today. Today we make a big thing out of every single thing there that's actually a normal growth and development cycle for us. I want to add here something, or maybe it's a little a different position. When I listen to people who are doing change management and want to do all this climate change stuff and uh, against it or against this, against that and change, blah, blah, blah. Um, I see that people who are working on it and want to have a change, they think that change is always positive. And I'm not so sure that uh, when it is induced a change without having it thought through thoroughly, if this is really a positive change, which we which they are working on or not. So, you know, when it's a natural change, yeah, I'm completely what 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 you are saying. And also, you know, uh, with this home office thing. Before people, many people wanted to work home office and they were not allowed. And now they they could do it, but many other people don't want to do it and they want to see people and meet people. So uh, both changes are in some way good, you know? And if out of this situation uh, um, is born a possibility to either be in the office or, or work at home at your will, at your what you want, you know, some people really want to meet other people people to have a talk and and have a coffee while sitting all the time in front of the computer is not the optimum thing. So how can we decide if something is good or bad? That's what I wanted uh, to, to say. And for me, um, normally I see it later, what was good and what was not so good, but it, you have a sort of a feeling, you know, of uh, maybe it's a good strategy. Um, at the moment, I don't have a lot of strategies. I just sort of 
<laughs> how can I say, live the day, do my things and mm -hmm. discover that I sort of like to do them. You know, I don't feel like have any more having to do that or being overwhelmed. I did a wonderful with Annalisa, both you don't know her, she's in my my German speaking groups. I did an inner vice session with her on the feeling of overwhelm. And since then I don't have it anymore. And I hope it stays. And that's so the 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 life is much better. But what I still wanted to ask you, Hanali, you said, how do I meet the change, positively or negatively, you know? And if you are not in, in peace with it, and if you are in fear, whatever, what are you doing to, to come into balance and to re-equilibrate re it? This is Monia. Yeah. <laughs> For me personally, I love to... I, I go out into nature. Mm -hmm. One of the first things when I feel I'm out of out of out of my space, and lots of breathing practices, and physical movement helps me personally. It doesn't say it's going to help anybody, everybody, but for me, it's to move through it rather than to sit still and worry about it, or to think and overanalyze it. So for me, movement personally is a, is a great way to whether I go for a walk or dance or just move around. It doesn't matter. But breathing br brings my attention back into my body as well. Conscious breathing. And just to take a pause, to take a step back from whatever is happening in front of me that I can see it from a bit further away. And you succeed in doing it. I, I... Well, I become, it's, it's, it's not always. <laughs> I'm human. It, mm -hmm. it comes, it, it, it comes um, in different in different ways, but you know, my my I, I become more quicker aware that I must remove myself from it, that I can look at it from a distance. Mm. And just to detach a little bit from it that I don't get overwhelmed and inside of it. Because when I'm inside of it, it's very hard to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hello Gertraud. We are talking about time perception and change and Monia tries to come in but she doesn't make it and she wrote to me she will give up she tried with cell phone and oh here there she you is are. Oh, we she's gone again. Oh. <laughs> I just saw her <laughs> something <laughs> happened anyway <laughs> we were talking about these two t topics together how are you get out I'm fine I had a Wonderful weekend with, uh, yeah, WeFlow. Um, so nice participants. And yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I had six calls or five calls today. So I'm kind of empty, <laughs> not much, uh, not many thoughts. And you have such a beautiful flower meadow behind you. Yes, it is mm. out there. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's just the right time or is it? This is about two weeks ago. Now they are putting up the seeds and they have then sort of gray little things on top. So now it's a little bit more like like misty, the colors. Mm -hmm. They are not so so... It's so pretty. Yeah. yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's it's beautiful. And there are thousands of, of them on this uh, place. It's maybe 10 to 6 meters or something, you know, and that's all full, 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 full. Yeah, it's wonderful. That was our uh, starter to talk about spring coming, and then from there we went to change. And uh, Hanili said that change would be uh, the good if it's good or not good. It's a, a, a sort of a mental construct. No, it's a conditioning how you how you perceive change. What would you say? For me, there are uh, different aspects to it. It's it's like the mental aspect 
because change is happening <laughs> just just because we are and because we are living in this in this 3d world um and there is an emotional aspect to it and a physical and and for for me there is also uh, this this like change happens in cycles <laughs> like year round or sometimes linear as well so i'm uh the the new method i learned it's called instant change and it's it's like be connected to the quantum field and within seconds to have really like uh, a state change uh -huh. headache gone or I had somebody I'm practicing with who had a beginning like what do you call it muscle kata mm -hmm. the aching muscles Ache. after sport and she said I know tomorrow it will be just I can't move because I did so much and then we worked and she said it's gone I, I don't have that so a day later so so what is that construct that we think change uh how change has to roll out <laughs> or to, so it's yeah what we believe will happen somehow and there are natural cycles so so it's it's a dance so to say for me so question to you uh, this change uh, <laughs> that she didn't have any any um horrible feeling in the muscles anymore was it on the mental or on the physical or how did you did you work on uh, yeah that's an energetic work mm -hmm. and um she knows from oh great <laughs> she knows from past times when she did workouts like that that she will have muscle pain after that and so she said, I, I feel like it's already starting. And can we just put that in the in the package? And we did. So and um, yeah, and then it never appeared. Good, Monia, finally. Well, it's just stubbornness, stubbornness. It's just stubbornness. <laughs> Okay, I've never tried for half an hour to, yeah, it's probably uh, Google and Firefox fighting against each other and this sort of, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your talk about, what was it? Time <laughs> and change. <laughs> okay. Change and time perception. And, yeah, so... Uh, you changed your 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 situation by being I stubborn and trying and, and trying now. and trying and now you are here. Yeah, it worked. It, I changed to Firefox and now it worked. But uh, and then I took a look, a closer look at the link of my camera, and so maybe that helped too. Anyway, um, I'm yeah. sorry I missed your talk, and I'm just continuing to listen, but I can talk now as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us what you think about the time. We were saying that the time is running. And uh, Christine said that she finds that the days are going so quickly if she doesn't succeed to put everything she wanted to, to, to do into this day. And uh, Hanuli had a bit of different uh, uh, idea. Me too. Uh, me just runs the time <laughs> without needing to put things into into it and um get out talked a little bit about her new course she is a new what is it uh not it's not a course it's a formation what is it method, yeah. it's an energetic method 
a new a new method again another one yeah yeah, yeah i mean <laughs> great i just like i uh when i listened in i heard uh, christine say that her daughter will marry in april hmm. no wonder you you uh, you have no time for anything because there are so many things i guess <laughs> well a year from april a year yeah. mm. a year from april from my goodness <laughs> Takes well, time to decide. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Uh, I have all the time I need for whatever I do, but probably I'm doing less and less. Uh, although I'm feeling more energetic now after I had one month of microchondrium, whatever uh, additional. From my doctor, he told me to try that. And I caught a terrible cold last Sunday, and now it's almost gone, almost. So I had all the time of, I, I slept a lot, and uh, I didn't ask too much of myself. Maybe that helps as well. <laughs> but I still have my regular schedule to go out of the house twice a week at least and travel by public transportation to wherever I want to go. Um, yeah, it's, I'm wondering about, because when I looked out before we started, it was still light and I felt, well, if this now, if we next uh, Saturday or next Sunday, we will have summertime and then it will be very complicated. I don't know how we manage to adapt all our times, our different time uh, schedules. Um, it will still be at 6 p.m. or local time, my time. Or it will be 6 p.m. our time, which is with light. Because otherwise, the Americans, it goes too far into the day. You know. I didn't quite get that. So what time we will start? Like our nominally the same time, 6. 6, 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. OK. Two weeks. Yeah. Next and week. the American, you, you, have, you have a few weeks before or after the before. time change. They have so, already changed. So already changed. you already changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about you in, in South Africa? We don't change time, but because of our session, it, we will be on the same time as Europe. So I'll be the same as you. We now, I'm an hour ahead of you. Okay. Uh, so, I, yeah, so I, I will just come, I'll, I'll come up an hour earlier. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that explains talking about time. It's just absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Just so confusion. Yeah. This and why they I... couldn't get that together, the the Americas and the and and uh, Europe, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But well, well I think it makes no sense from... because we don't have it. No, we don't have we don't have time changes. So we for us it's strange because we it stays you the have same. To, have to the rest of the world. Yes. <laughs> and this morning I was in a session with other ladies from. Australia and UK and um, two of them, one from Australia and one of the ladies in the UK, were completely confused about the time. Sure. They they would so there is this time I think because of that happening soon with with the Europe and the UK and or in America already have done this. There's I think there's this displacement happening. People feel a bit out of bounds. There's not there's not alignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the animals as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's a kind the of funny. The funny thing is, this morning Victoria got on an hour early, too early, and she was the one who last time corrected me because she had the right time at, uh -huh. at, at we were supposed to meet, and yet this time she she got it reversed. So that's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, because we had on. now a meeting, so she wanted to, everything to start earlier, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's still, it's nine hours to the West Coast, isn't it? From, in, 
Next week, from next week. Yeah, nine week. hours. Yeah. This week, it's eight hours. I eight think. hours. Yeah. Right. yeah. Next week, nine. Yeah. Because this I remember when we were in the States and yeah, it was always as difficult as it is now. I'm so happy that I finally managed to get in. <laughs> <laughs> and we're so happy to, that you managed that. The yeah. perseverance, that the perseverance really worked. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah, it was pure stubbornness. I wouldn't call it perseverance, it was stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> How is your hip doing? Hmm? How is your hip doing? Oh, it's fine. I it's it was just uh, the energy level because I got tired very soon, and I usually around eight o'clock at night I'm just uh, yeah I'm just ready to go to bed, but then I delay a little because I, I can't sleep for eleven hours. And um, but the hip is perfect. So the doctor really did a, an excellent job, and I'm in awe of him because. And of course, of my bones, because he told me about uh, the bones. Some bo some patients come, and when he works on them, their bones just decay, brittle, and uh, that makes me quite happy that I, because I have rather small bones, and but they are just as stubborn as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about change when you think about 10 years ago when we did the Google Hangouts together. How, what is, uh, what a challenge it was with technology. And we passed hours and hours to figure out how we could do things. And now, I mean, you didn't give up. It was probably unusual the difficulty you had. But yeah. normally we just click and we come in and we talk together from South Africa to Germany to Austria to America. I mean, isn't that isn't that a beautiful change? Well, the amazing thing is, I already had given up, <laughs> and yeah. then uh, and then I sort of I looked at uh, whatever connects there on the on the on the on the material basis and said maybe I choose to. Really, then I looked at it and then maybe I should put it in the other way again. And it was, I don't know, it's just, uh, it, will, it would have been the same if I came in or not. And maybe it's that's the um, set of mind you need just to get things going. I don't know, it's just what I figured. Uh, I mean, if you want too much a thing, then it's hard to achieve it because uh, too much. You but, know. but it's not just my fault. I know that Google and Firefox they just fight each other, mm -hmm. and uh, they try to. And I have both programs, and so maybe I. But I can't uh, delete Google Chrome because it's most of the Zoom things. But here I am now in Firefox and. I don't know. It's yeah. So I'll next time I'll just try a Firefox and not Google, and then it will work out again. So it's a learning process as always. Only it's a little harder when you're more than eighty years old. <laughs> yeah. I I can hardly believe it. I, really, I mean, it's like what <laughs> you keep reminding us, but uh, yeah, eighty two, eighty two, eighty two, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Yeah, well, it doesn't. It doesn't matter as long as I get my wits together. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still. We are now discussing the self and the ego tunnel in our salon next time, and two men will hold. Uh, one will talk about the ego tunnel, and the other about David Siegel. Uh, I think it's about uh, meditation. Or, and I asked one of them, have you called him? And how will you work it out? No, I haven't called him. Everyone will hold, he will hold his lecture and I will hold my lecture. And so I just sat there and he said, well, you can ask him. I said, well, it's, it's your evening and your program. And they don't communicate. So that's really amazing. And they are calling themselves integral. And Wilbur, uh, yes. and so it's just, yeah, I was, I was sitting there and I said, well, maybe it's just 
That's the way it is with men. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very sexist, but <laughs> what, what could you what could you do about that? It's uh, if I uh, join in a lecture with somebody else on a certain topic, maybe from different angles. I talk to. I mean, it's it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> not to to talk about it. Maybe I just write the other man. Maybe he is more sophisticated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely a different way of of doing. In this connection, I want to tell you what I discovered the last three weeks. I had a friend here from Switzerland, and she brought her viola. Mm -hmm. And we started to do improvisations together. Mm -hmm. And that was so great. I discovered a completely new way of listening and doing at the same mm -hmm. time. That was amazing. I'm now, I'm sad that she's gone. She, they were here only for three weeks. But um, we did at least 15, 16 times. Oh, and wow. developed also and... You know, when you, that happens sometimes with talking, you know, you don't know what the next word is. It just comes out. And then the same thing with music. And then the deliberations about music. At a certain point, I used also a text of, of poet, poesy, poetry. And I noticed that uh, music is primary because uh, the text is sort of, how can I say? Yeah, I, I use it, but it's, it's, it's the vehicle for the sound in some way. You know, it's, and, and I remember the, the idea that before we can speak, we sing as, as children, as babies, you know? And so uh, the sound is primary to, to words. And so many of these insights I gained just by, by doing this work of, of doing improvisation and was really, really great. I, I would love to, to have you here as an audience. Uh, it was a completely new uh, experience for me and very satisfying because I realized that my voice goes wherever it wants to go without impediment and without why when you have to sing something, you know, with the notes. We, we, we did music like Schoenberg, like Alban Berg or something like this. And when you do it out of your feeling, that's one thing. But if you have to learn these notes, these, that would be horrible, you know? So <laughs> much dif difficulty. But it, I can now understand why these composers did this sort of music because I tried it out spontaneously for myself and it makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. Ever so, tried chess? Um, yeah, no, but that, that didn't make um, sense in this context here. Yeah. Not just improvisations, I mean, in, in, in jazz. Uh... Yeah, no, no, that was really free uh, uh, improvisation on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on listening what the other is doing and doing together and sometimes even enjoying the disharmonies, the, no. the coming together of two notes very happy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a friend of mine, Heidi, when you share that, a friend of mine in the US, which I've never met physically as well, but who I used to share many journeys with many, many years ago, like, like almost 20 years ago now, I was, um, I was designing a self-mastery discovery journey for Ubiquiti University at the time. And there were 13 threads of which people would go through, different threads about ourselves. A lot about self-awareness first before awareness of other and the world and so on. And one day she, and we didn't connect for quite a while. And then one day we connected and I knew she was a harpist and she had, I didn't know that she had three harps and there's the kitty as well, hello kitty. And then she, she, I saw the one harp behind her and I said to her, why don't you pick up your harp? I've got this, these certain frets which I never told her about. She had no idea what was in each fret. And 
I started just saying very key words about every thread. And she would start to create, a, in, in an improv way, a whole melody about that, the essence of that thread. And out of the 13 threads, there was only one that there was a bit of dissonance. The others were all in resonance and aligned with the, the essence and the energy of each thread. It was just amazing because it, it happened so spontaneously. And I think it brings me back to change. If we just be curious and open to, to just be with it instead of making a decision whether it's good or bad. Yeah, and something the, beautiful can birth from it. The experience here is when you uh, ha go into dissonance, but you don't do it in an active a, a, a cute way, but in a receptive way, then the dissonances are beautiful together because every sound has the ha harmonic uh, uh, chain. And at the end, there is dissonant sounds. They are coming together on the same sound. So mm -hmm. it depends if you cut a dissonance, you know, like this, then it's, uh, but if it is in a open, wide way, mm -hmm. putting them together, that's it's beautiful, and then somehow it resolves then into into harmony and into resonance, you know. But yeah, that was really good experience, and I would love to be able to continue online, but I don't think there's any service which can do the immediate contemporary music. So, in and when we do it on on Zoom, that will be Katzenmusik. That means music of the cats. <laughs> but they, there's something in in uh, Zoom that you can um, like uh, share the music as well. I know, I don't know if but the, 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 the sound the the quality is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, but singing together, to playing together, yeah. is not possible. That's yeah. Uh, Heidi, what does the possibility gap mean? It's next to your name. <laughs> that's that. As we're speaking about time, it's to it's the it's the a, a gap. If we look at gap, it means in my in my world, it means galactic activation portal. So it's it's a portal we go into a a, a limitless, timeless space, a liminal space between worlds, so to speak, between realities that we can explore something different. All the in so we go into the quantum field, so to speak, uh, in in a Kairos time space, not oh. in Chrono, not in Chronos time. And so we we literally move ourselves from this world as we experience it now, and we go into this timeless space to explore other possibilities instead of looking at problems. So exploring new ways of being, thinking, feeling, sensing, relating, co-creating, exchanging, and likes. Well, actually, I shouldn't understand your word, but I, I feel I feel what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I have to tell you, I created a poem. I was sharing about the possibility gap with a gentleman um, who are very good at reading patterns, pattern recognition, which is a right brain hemisphere ability. And I created a poem to to share about the possibility gap. And... He got so in his left brain, listening to what I was saying, to try to already think what I'm going to say ahead, that he, that he didn't hear a thing I said, because he went completely into his left brain. It was it was so interesting, because I've never experienced something. A lot of times people won't understand what you're saying, which is quite fine, but and they will also feel, but he was completely in his left brain. Yeah, and he well, admitted well, it. He said it afterwards. He said it afterwards. I didn't hear a thing you said, not because of what you said, but because I was trying to already predict what you're going to say. And it was exactly what happened. I, thinking about what you said, I couldn't understand the word, but feeling it, it was okay. <laughs> so, yeah, to switch the brain held. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I, I think our brains relate to time in very different ways. The left brain is very linear and it's going to think of things in sequences and, and the right brain is holistic and it's going to look more for just associations, things that maybe co-occur 
or mm -hmm. have a relationship. And that is the essence of time is just relatedness or association mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be in a stepwise sequence. So, you know, I think we we're not even we don't have to depend on just relating to time in one way. Yeah, and if we are uh, have our brain, uh, our hemispheres in in uh, coherence, then it's uh, another, or then there is timelessness, even beyond these capacities. So, how how would you describe that the timelessness if, if from the coherence? I feel it often as as time would expand. So there is this now that in a sequence would go past quickly, but this is like it's it's expanding. And 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 I feel that this is like where the seeds of change come out so i don't know if that's the causal or what that but it's 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 like when i'm talking about this lady i uh, with the, the muscle uh, pain it changed within this just doing this process and we were both in this zone or in the in the in and she came out in a completely different way than she went in so it's not that i did something and muscle massage or so and then it got got better it was as if there was something in that expanded time that changed yeah completely reversed or completely did something else I, I mean it's it was not not a sequence it was not just state change or whatever you call it yeah thanks I've and I, I get okay. that with coaching as well so I'm I'm when I'm coaching and I'm really listening I mean it doesn't happen 100% of the time but very often then there is <laughs> there is no time in the in the feeling Christine of time. Christine has no time. time. Christine has to go. She has no time. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> I have to go. My husband is uh, preparing the dinner and uh... <laughs> but it's nice to see you and even if it gets a little bit. <laughs> this time it was all like this. <laughs> Monia, you are. Yeah. Monia, you are a representation of timelessness. Yes, she is. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. And maybe I look in the mirror, but in the morning it's not. The best. <laughs> it's not the best time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Keep timeless, ladies. Have Thank nice you. Easter time and find many Easter eggs and uh, <laughs> colors like my flowers. I wish you all the best. And Thank this you. Happy right. Easter. Bye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And okay. Gertrude, maybe you could talk more about your new, new process, the one you just mm -hmm. got into, because it's always rather fascinating what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miss Lorraine, we will have something about the poly polyvagal theory. And one day when we need to find a, a time when you can be here from the beginning, then we can we can do this topic. I would love well, to. We, uh, it's polyvagus uh, Günther Enzi, you know him. He, he is yeah. very deeply into that. And... Yeah. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Yeah, you Me will neither. see. Felix, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> neither do I. <laughs> hey, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.